Hi, welcome back to Find the Revealed. I'm Michelle. In this episode, I want to talk about making space to begin your transition in your work. First, some people say you need to dig holes before you can fill them. Uh, just from a practical standpoint, if you are already a busy person with home and family and social commitments and work, a big change in one of those it will affect every other part of your life. In planning for something, you need to first make the space. Here we're talking about your working life. So what I did and what might be helpful for you is looking at first your commitments. What are the commitments that you have already in that business life? Uh, one situation I was in, it was financial. That may be your situation. Either you have signed on for debt uh, that you owe with a group of people and you can't leave or transition out from the income stream that you're providing for that group uh, without taking care of this debt. For some people, I know some salespeople, you can receive merchandise or benefits from your employer, whether or not you're an owner uh, or an employee, and that is kind of an advance against commissions or other earnings that you might have. So you need to weigh those financial situation and conditions in order to evaluate what your timing may, might be, your time frame might be, when that will be paid off, or if you can pay it off from other means and retire it early. When you might face the possibility of leaving where you are, you need to look at your retirement situation and did you take out any loans against your retirement that you would have to pay back? Review those terms and see what those conditions and amounts are. So you just wanna basically look at what your commitments are financially. Next, you wanna look at the commitment that you have for ongoing projects or ongoing clients. Now, in my case, I'm a professional which means I have an, not just my job, uh, where I have you know, clients who are relying on me to do certain uh, types of work, but I have a professional relationship in that I have professional obligations beyond just them hiring me for something. So let me explain. For example, uh, large pieces of litigation, if we've been in court fighting over things for a long period of time, would it be detrimental to the client to change horses in the middle or near the end? Most likely, yes. So we have other uh, considerations that have to be made. Similar to a doctor, say a doctor is treating someone and they're reviewing their numbers, their blood work, and they have a protocol that they're following. Beyond just the mechanical numbers of what their blood tests might be or uh, their blood count or you know whatever type of test they have, they have an obligation under the Hippocratic Oath to not do harm to that person. And in a, in a situation, the patient is relying on the doctor. They've made some type of a bond usually in order to get through this, um, this challenge. So it would be a long project that's going on and there are no different pieces to it. So you want to look at what the pieces of that are where you are an integral part of that. And if you are making a change, but you're going to stay with this company, then obviously you don't want to hurt the company and you don't want to hurt the customer. So those are the project and client commitments. And then the third type of commitment that you need to look at in order to get ready and make space for your transition is in the area of contracts. Do you have an employment contract with your employer? What does it say that you will do? And does it say you will devote substantially all of your time to a particular piece um, or part of your overall contribution and work? You want to go back and review those documents because any change from that can put you in peril of being dismissed or in breach of that contract. So, you know, and you might have worked there a really long time and you haven't thought about it in a long time, but did you sign a contract or do you have any other contracts? Does your employer have a contract where your project manager and it names you specifically? And then if you are not going to be project managing anymore, uh, are there procedures to substitute you for someone else? Or if that's not possible, again, look at the time frame so that you can figure out 
um, make sure you have enough time to devote to this to see it through. So those are the main three areas for identifying commitments. And within those, that will help you identify your time frame when you can start to build in the transition. Because each of these things, uh, however they apply for your situation, are going to have a time involved. We don't get to always do things the way we want to, or if we want to do it and we want to start right now, not always possible. So outline those areas and jot that down, make a list if you have to, and then think about what is required for each of those. And is this now going to be a time frame that is going to start in two years or one year or next month? You know, think about that and, and try to plan for that. Um, you know, what time will it take to complete all of those things? And of the total time, can you make that shorter? You know, if you had a 401k loan, can you go take another investment and pay that off? Uh, can you, can, what, is there something that you can do? Can you bring on, uh, do you have a protege? Do you have an assistant? Do you have a, another person in your department that you are grooming anyway that might be able to take over that project manager position? and it would be a natural transition over that will then free you up. Uh, that's a possibility too. So you want to you want to know what the things are because you have to know about them before you can affect any change there. So then you figure out your time frame. Now this is kind of this is going to sound maybe odd because you can't plan for what you don't know but there are going to be wild cards. In my situation, it is the other people involved. So I've got a long-standing uh, project for a client. I have to see it through the end. It under my, you know, my obligation to them, the ongoing relationship, just common sense. I've started it. I need to finish it. But I don't have the control to know when it will be over. There are judges involved. There are people on the other side. Some of them have not the most agreeable or professional or ordinary personalities that you can predict with any type of certainty what they're going to do. Uh, in one situation I have, they completely do the opposite of what everyone else would do. So you've got wild cards. In your situation, uh, there could be, a, you know, maybe there was a hurricane and, and you're doing a construction project and now lumber is at a premium and it's not available you've got a material that's not available you've got uh, someone some other piece of a bigger project that falls off the desk and and it has to be rebuilt or there was re-engineering or the client wanted something different if you're an architect and they want something redrawn or there was a financing piece and they need to work in another geographical area before they can come back to your project so there's going to be a delay so what are the wild cards in your experience that could pop up or might pop up? And you kind of need to think about that. Whenever there are other people involved, they are all the wild card. Even the, even the client or patient or customer can be the wild card. So think about those um, because you have to allot for you hopping off this, you know, this project and coming back over here, something you thought was about to be finished and now you have to spend more time there. So if you've already got this piece of work to do, this one blows up, you can't move ahead on something new until you make sure all of these are, are covered. So you want to consider the wild cards. And then other circumstances, known or unknown, you're going to need to leave some space there. So I hope this was helpful as a preliminary, preliminary step for you when you're thinking about transitioning and you're going to pull partly away from something and move and add something else and combine them to make the space to allow for that transition. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments below. Subscribe to see our other videos. Share this with somebody in, you know, your spouse, your friend who's talking about making a change, even a coworker who confided in you or a partner. Uh, to, just to make sure that they've considered all the possibilities because sometimes you get excited and you just want to do it. Uh, but they want to do it in a measured way and hopefully this will help. So share it with them and come back and see me again next time. Thank you for watching.